Welcome. If you're going to do anything in January, I'm inviting you to attend the Tanaminawai and Mōbōhina commemoration at this very spot at midday sharp on Monday the 20th of January 2020. This is the Tanaminawai Mōbōhina monument which was erected in 2016 after a 14 year campaign to acknowledge the injustice of what occurred to Tanaminawai Mōbōhina on the 20th of January 1842 when they were hung at this very spot for resisting white colonisation. Theirs is an extraordinary story. It's a story of love, it's a story of courage, it's a story of action. It's the type of story that every Australian should be aware of, but very few are. Tanaminawai, Mōbōhina, Planabina, Putirana and Traganini were some of the 82 years survivors of the some of the 82 survivors of the 40 year war of colonisation that occurred in Tasmania from 1803 to about the uh, late 1830s. And in 1839 350 survivors of the genocide were transported to Flinders Island within a year the population had decreased to 82. Mr Augustus Robertson, who was responsible for the removal of the Aborigines from Tasmania, hawked his services to the New South Wales Government, which was in charge of the Port Phillip settlement in 1840, offering his Aborigines as a way of civilising the Victorian blacks. And in 1839, 17 of the 82 survivors living on Flinders Island were brought across to Melbourne in an attempt to pacify and civilise the Victorian black blacks. In 1841, five of the 17, Tanaminaway, Borborhina, Planobina, Putirana and Traganini began a war of resistance which spread across the Dandenongs and the Mornington Peninsula, forcing hundreds if not thousands of squatters who had squatted on Bunarong land to flee back to Melbourne. After an intensive campaign which involved soldiers, police, squatters, settlers, the five were apprehended and taken to Melbourne in late 1841. The five were uh, tried for murder. Two men had been killed during this campaign. Uh, this was a particularly, considering what had occurred to the Tasmanians, this was a particularly non-violent campaign. When they came across the squatter's hut, uh, women and children and men were allowed to go free. Uh, they took uh, food and weapons, burnt down the huts to force the squatters back into Melbourne. At one stage they were involved in a uh, battle and uh, two whalers were killed and they were charged with their murders. In late 1841, a jury found them guilty of murder. The so a jury found Tanaminawai and Morbohina guilty of murder and found Traganini, Planabina and Traganini innocent. In interestingly, Tanaminawai and Planabina had been married in a religious ceremony in Tasmania and Traganini was involved in a relationship with Morbohina. So I said, this is a love story, it's a story of our passion. On the 20th of January 1842, they were dragged to the spot outside the old Belver Jail which was being built at that particular point in time and they were the first two people executed in Victoria. And they were executed as the judge said, although the jury has said to display mercy because of their peculiar circumstances, they were executed 
to show Victorian Aborigines what would happen to them if they violently resisted colonisation. These two men were written out of Australian history in 2002 while rummaging through a second-hand bookshop in Hampton in Melbourne I came across a book called Jack of Cape Grim, which was a 1988 bicentenary project. And I couldn't believe when I read the story that I didn't know about this story. I kind of pride myself as knowing the history of this country. And I felt that uh, this story should be everybody's story because it highlighted the unfinished business that exists between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. It highlighted the collective amnesia which exists regarding the colonisation process, which is a brutal process which was based on murder, rape, dispossession, whose legacy continues on in 2020. So for the next two years I spoke about this to my late partner Alan Jose and our friends in the Anarchist Moon Institute. And in 2004, after my late wife had a successful exhibition called A Fact is a Fact is a Fact Up Yours Wind Shuttle, which highlighted and pilloried those elements in society, including the Prime Minister John Howard, which tried to write out, white out this country's uh, brutal history. We formed the Tanaminawai and Morboy Hina Commemoration Committee and commenced commemorations here at the corner of Victoria and Franklin Street on the 20th of January. In 2006, we, in, we recalled the committee, the Tanaminawai and Morboy Hina Commemoration Committee, and opened it to new people, not just members of the Anarchist Media Institute. And over the next 12 to 14 years, we conducted a high profile campaign to erect the first major monument to the frontier wars in a major urban centre in this country. It involved me standing as Lord Mayor on two separate occasions to highlight the issue. And in 2016, after this long struggle and a national competition among Indigenous artists for a winning design, this monument was established by the Melbourne City Council, despite vociferous opposition from the Lord Mayor at that time, Mr Robert Doyle. I'd like to acknowledge two groups that assisted us during this period, with, without whose assistance we would never have been able to establish the monument. The first is the radical elements of the Victorian community in Victoria, who stood by our side during this struggle, including Bunarong elder Carolyn Briggs, who is the patron of the Tanaminawaya Moorboy Inner Commemoration Committee. And secondly, I'd like to acknowledge Councillor Cathy Oak, the only Green Councillor in the Melbourne City Council at that stage, who raised this issue again and again and again on the floor of the Melbourne City Council in order to achieve an absolute majority of councillors who agreed to fund and erect the monuments. Now to me the 20th of January is exceptionally important. I don't care. I never celebrate the 26th of January. I don't even acknowledge it. Why should I acknowledge the beginning of a penal settlement in Botany Bay in 1788 on the 26th of January? But to me the 20th of January rivals Anzac Day. And that's why when we first formed the committee in 2014 we called it Lest We Forget. The Tanaminaway and Morbohina Commemoration Committee. Lest We Forget. Because Lest We Forget is not just a phrase which is used by Anzac. They can't copyright that phrase. We use that phrase to highlight something very important. On the 25th of April every year, we commemorate those men and women from this country, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, who gave up their lives fighting other people's wars in other people's lands. And I have no issue with that, none whatsoever. But we never remember and commemorate those Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who paid the ultimate sacrifice for 
protecting their land, their language, their culture, their way of life. This country is built on the blood and bones and dispossession of tens of thousands of unnamed, unrecognised Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who paid the ultimate price for resisting white colonisation. Today, today, 228 years later, we continue, we continue to be the recipients of that process. We continue to enjoy the bounty of this land without addressing the unfinished business, without addressing the carbuncle which exists between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians in this country. And to me, the 20th of January is Indigenous Freedom Fighters Day. It's a day which be, should be set aside across this country, not just to commemorate Tanaminawe and Morbohina, not just to commemorate Planabina, Putirana and Traganini, but to commemorate every man, woman and child who died in that colonisation process. People who were driven off their lands, driven away from their water sources, poisoned, infected with smallpox, blankets being distributed with smallpox, spores on them. People who were hacked to death, as we saw in New South Wales and, and Queensland. Bodies being dismembered and burnt in the dead of night in an undeclared war between squatters and Indigenous Australians. A battle which led to almost the extinction of Indigenous people, especially in South East Australia. On the 20th of January, I keep this day aside. I keep this day aside with my fellow Australians who accept the fact that we need to acknowledge the past before we can actually attempt to reach a reconciliation settlement based on justice, not charity, with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders in this country. On the 20th of January, I and other people who come to the ceremony remember those men, women and children. Not just the heroes, not just those that were judiciously executed by the state for, uh, for uh, resisting colonisation, but all those people who were killed in the most indiscriminate ways, in the most brutal ways, whose blood and bones we walk upon every day of our existence. I remember them. And I remember them because they died for what we celebrate, for what we commemorate on Anzac Day. They died fighting for their country, their way of life, their culture, their language. I remember that on the 20th of January, and I would like to see people across this country use this day, the 20th of January, to set up ceremonies across the country to acknowledge those unrecognised Indigenous people who had lived on this continent for over 60,000 years. This year, the Bass Reconciliation Committee, the Bass Coast Reconciliation Committee, as they did last year, is holding a commemoration at 10.30am in Wonthaggy, in the park, next to the Information Centre in Wonthaggy. Join them. This year, as we've done since 2004, we are holding a commemoration here at the site of the execution of Tanaminawai and Morbohina to mark the 178th anniversary. It's at the corner of Victoria and Franklin Street in the city, opposite the old uh, Melbourne Jail, next to RMIT. We will be here, we'll have a bevy of guest speakers, not people in authority, but people who care. We want you to bring your children, we want you to bring your family. The ceremony will go from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, It'll be broadcast live on Community Radio 3CR. If you can't make, can't make it, listen to Community Radio 3CR, 855 on your AM dial, or www.3cr.org.au. And then at one o'clock, we'll silently walk from this spot down to the old Victoria Markets, which will be closed for business on the day, being a Monday. 
to the last, to what we believe is the last resting place of Tanaminawe and Morbohina. This is your chance to reclaim your history, understand the present, and most important of all, be, be involved in a campaign to change the future, to change the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians based on justice. As the Uluru Statement said, they want us to acknowledge the past. They want us to enter uh, negotiations into treaty or treaties. They want us, they want us to be part of their culture, their country. This is our chance. Bring your children, it's a children friendly affair. It's important they learn what's happened in this country because they are the only one that we will break the current impasse which exists in this country where so many people refuse to acknowledge the past. Without acknowledging the past, we cannot take that first step towards reconciliation between Indigenous Australians and other Australians. Whether you were born in this country, whether you're a migrant, whether you're a child of a migrant, it's important that we all be involved in this campaign and if you can't make it here this year organize something in your part of Australia on the 20th of January 2021. It's only through us taking action that we will force governments at the local, state and federal level to acknowledge the past so we can take that first step towards reconciliation based on justice.